Hello, this is Mrs. Kringle, and I want to um, share with you today some information about information sources or news sources that we find on the internet and how to evaluate those and why we need to evaluate those and what's so important about evaluating those. Um, so as you can see on the cartoon here, it says it's on the internet, so it must be true, okay? Not necessarily. We need to be very careful about what we choose for our new sources. Um, today we're going to talk about a source or a technique you can use for evaluating internet news sources. I'm going to turn my presentation on so you can see. This is called the CARP evaluation method for internet news sources. Um, if you're like my husband, you think carp is very, very tasty, and you're, when you're fishing and you happen to be lucky enough to catch one, you eat it, um, and you just love it. Um, there are some people who say carp are garbage fish and they throw them back without eating them or keeping them and a lot depends on on where you're from in terms of what the carp is eating and whether it tastes good. Okay, so with our news sources we need to be picky, okay? We need to determine whether or not the news source that we're looking at is good to consume, okay? Like carp. And so when you're looking at carp, carp stands for currency, authority, accuracy, relevance, and purpose. And if you can evaluate each one of those for each news source, each one of those five things for each news source, and if it ends up checking out for all of those different sections, then it would be a good and reliable news source to use. This technique was developed by librarians at California State University in Chico, California. It is a evaluation method that is used across the country, um, particularly in higher ed college level. So it's something that you will see again. Currency simply means when was the article written, created, updated, or, or revised. Some topics that you choose for research, you can have older information. Um, and some topics are very current or need current information. So you have to evaluate your topic in terms of determining whether the currency is good enough um, for your topic. Authority. You want to look at when you're evaluating news sources on the internet, you want to look at who wrote the article. Can you locate an author or an organization responsible for the content? What are their credentials and are they qualified to write on the topic? You, for example, if you were going to do a paper on cancer, you breast cancer, you wouldn't want to have use a article or a source on the internet that is written by a person not in the medical community. So you want to make sure that you're looking at your author's credentials. Are they qualified? Do they know what they're talking about before you start using these sources? Accuracy. This is really important. Where does the information come from? Are there citations provided so you can go back and verify the information independently? What is the URL where this information is coming from? There's a vast difference between getting information from a .gov site, which is a .government site, versus a .com site, which is a commercial site. So it's really important that you evaluate where your information is coming from and if they're including links or citations. You want to be able to verify your information independently. If you can't go back and see these sources they're using, you need to be suspicious. The R stands for relevance. Is the information appropriate for your information needs? Is it written at an appropriate content level? Okay, so you need to think about your topic and then you need to look and evaluate the source that you're using. Does it match your topic? Okay, you're not going to use, if you're in honors English, you're not going to be using a source written for elementary school kids um, on a topic to put into your paper. Purpose. You need to evaluate your news sources to determine why the content was created. Is it designed to entertain, educate, persuade, or sell something? Again, if you look at that .com, that'll give you a, a beginning of an idea about that. But you also need to independently think about what you're reading. What is the author trying to do here? Are the author's intentions clear? If they're not, you need to be um, wary of using that as, an, as a source of information. Today we're going to look and use the CARP method to evaluate two different sites. One is from Mashable.com and one is from NYT.com. Um, so I want you to go to those two sites and it's best to open up two tabs so you can look at them both independently. And I want you to spend about well, three to four minutes here looking at the two sites 
Um, and then we'll come back and determine which one we think is more reliable based on CARP. We always need to have the evidence to go back to, okay? Um, rather than just a gut feeling, we need to be able to um, point to our sources that, or point to the points that concern us about the site. I'm going to open up, I have both tabs open here. Um, this is the first one from Mashable. It says, more people have died from selfies than shark attacks this year. Okay, and then here's the one from the NY Times. This is at West Point, annual pillow fight becomes weaponized. So go ahead and open up both those um, sites and start evaluating them. Start thinking about it. If you want to go back to my um, presentation, you can go back to my presentation and look at the CARP slide. That'll give you an idea of what we're looking for here. Again, we're looking for our currency, authority, accuracy, relevance, and purpose. So go ahead and take some time to look at and evaluate that. Okay, just from a cursory look, what I hope you've noticed about both sites is they are both .coms, and you can see right up here that they are both .coms. That means they are both commercial sites. So on some level, their intent is to sell, okay, to sell something. Um, if we look, both sites have ads, okay, that can be kind of distracting, although I think the ones on the NYT um, times, New York Times .com are a little bit less obtrusive than um, the ones on Mashable here, the ones on Mashable Change and uh, Flash, um, which always makes me a little bit suspicious. If you're getting your information from a site that has this many ads on it, you need to be kind of aware. Um, the West Point one um, from the New York Times, the West Point annual pillow fight becomes weaponized. I do see the ads, but they aren't flashing at me necessarily. Um, and it seems to be the same two ads. So yes, they're both here to sell me something, um, but I'm thinking already I'm leaning towards, I have a better feeling of authority and accuracy um, from this site right here than I am from here, simply from the look and feel of it. But it's important that I go through and evaluate it. So I think one of the most important things to look at here is this word right here, it says entertainment. Okay, so that makes me a little bit suspicious is entertainment. So maybe the purpose of the site is to just entertain me. As I scroll down, I look and see that this article was written in 2015. So it, it's pretty dated at this point. This article from the New York Times was also written in 2015. So at the same point, they're both about the same currency. Depends on what my topic is, was to whether or not that currency is going to be affected um, on whether or not I'm going to use this source. But it is, it is fairly dated at this point. One of the things we absolutely must do is look at our authors. And you'll see that in both articles, both sites, the author is a hyperlink. So if I go here to Kaylee Rizzo, she's writing science, okay? She's writing something that talks about how more people have died from selfies than from shark attacks. Um, and they're showing me some selfie-related deaths were 12, um, eight in shark-related deaths. Uh, interesting, look at the source here as to where that information came from. Um, so you can know that if you want to, you can maybe go back independently, although it's not giving me links back to that so, um, site. So that that is interesting for me here. Um, this is talking about selfies and sharks. Um, Al Jazeera, Russian interior minister, not sure about those sites that they're getting their information from. So I really need to find out who this person is. Is she qualified to write about this? So here is Kaylee Rizzo, the author, 
Kaylee studied journalism at SUNY Purchase, which is in New York, State University of New York, and French cinema and literature at Paris IV of Sorbonne. She is a cynical optimist and Talking Heads karaoke enthusiast. Drop her a line and there's her email. What I find really interesting is this picture. To me, this picture looks almost doctored. Um, looks like a fake background of, of Paris with this woman in front of it. I, I'm not really, I'm a little bit suspicious. She doesn't have any background in science. She's more in French cinema and literature. So already it's making me a little bit suspicious. I can look at some articles that she's written and she's done a lot of um, travel articles, it looks like. Um, but not a whole lot of, of serious stuff about science and health, which this article seems to be about. Okay, so already that makes me a little concerned. My authority on here is a little bit suspect, okay, um, along with who is publishing the site. If I look at the West Point article from the New York Times, here's the author here, Dave Phillips. Okay, so if I click on Dave Phillips' name, I get to a biography of Dave Phillips. Dave Phillips is a national correspondent covering veterans in the military and is a winner of the Pulitzer Prize for national reporting. Since joining the Times in 2014, he has covered the military community from the ground up, focusing largely on the unintended consequences of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So he is writing, he is a military expert. He writes about the military, has been involved in that community for quite a long time. So already I'm feeling a little bit more secure knowing that he's much more of an authority to write about the military than Kaylee Rizzo is to write about science and health. Um, he has the background. She doesn't necessarily. He's also won a Pulitzer Prize. A Pulitzer Prize is not given to an author unless they have an excellence in writing. So that to me already gives me some, some good feelings about that. When I look here, um, there have been a lot of people that I can go and search independently to verify whether the story is correct. Okay. There's another one right here. There's uh, links here that I can follow to see whether or not the information is correct independently. There's dates and times, which all these makes me um, happy. Okay. So there is a place also down here where I can look at, and you should always do this. If you don't know what a company is or who they are, go down here to the bottom, okay? And take a look to see if you can find something that says about the company, okay? Okay, this is the link for the About the New York Times, okay? Talks about the New York Times and who they are and what they what they do, okay? They have a subscription, they're a major national newspaper, okay? So already I'm thinking, hmm, they've got some, some real um, authority behind them to publish information like this. They probably have access to people that everyday person wouldn't have working for the, the Times. Okay, I don't know what Mashable is, so I need to go find out, just like I did with Kaylee Rizzo, I didn't know who she was. I need to find out what Mashable is, okay? I get down here, it says Mashable is a global multi-platform media and entertainment company powered by its own proprietary technology. Mashable is a go-to source for tech, digital culture, and entertainment contents for its dedicated and influential audience around the globe. So already right here, they're a media and entertainment company. So that makes me a little bit suspicious as to what their purpose is. Obviously, it's entertainment. It's designed to entertain me. Whereas this one, I know I can tell from the New York Times logo, the fact that it is a national news publication that's designed to inform. Okay, so for purposes of research, I'm much more likely to believe this source than I am to believe this one. The other thing you need to do when you are evaluating news sources from the internet is to think about the information being presented to you. It says more people have died from selfies than shark attacks this year. Let's just stop and think about that statement for a minute, okay? And if you look further into the article, it kind of talks to you a little bit about that, okay? talks about tourists dying, um, taking selfies with bears, bull runs, okay. Tour de France cyclists are concerned about selfie danger, okay. 
the real cause of death for these people is not the selfie itself. It's falling or it's in interaction with a wild animal. So really when you say you're comparing apples to oranges here, when you say people have died from selfies and shark attacks, it isn't the selfie itself that kills people. It's the position the person is in to take that selfie that is killing them. Okay. So we kind of need to think about that comparison. So just even start taking a moment to stop and think about the title um, and the content will give you an idea whether it's a new source to use. Okay. So as you kind of evaluate resources, it's important to remember the CARP method to determine whether the currency, the authority, the accuracy, the relevance, and the purpose are there. If they are, then you know it's a reliable source. Okay. One of the best things to do though, to avoid having to evaluate um, the sources is clearly is to only find reliable information. And the place to do that would be on the TF Riggs library um, website and the databases. Databases are enclosed sources of information where only reliable information is found. And it's the best place to find research to use for a project. So to get to the library page, we're gonna go to the Peer School District homepage, which is peer.k12.sd.us. We're gonna go to schools, we're going to go to TF Riggs High School, and we're going to go down here to the TF Riggs Library. Once you're on the library page, to get to the databases, which is where you can find lots and lots of reliable information, you're going to go here to where it says Riggs Research Help. Okay. And once you're on there, over here on this side is a list of databases provided by the South Dakota State Library. Databases cost a lot of money, okay? They aren't free, like going to Google and typing in a, a search term and getting results. Databases cost money, but the main benefit of databases is that the content that is provided to you when you do a search is going to be reliable. It is already carped by somebody. Somebody has already evaluated it for currency, authority, accuracy, relevance, and purpose. You don't have to worry about finding unreliable sources when you use a database. You're only gonna find reliable sources. The state library pays a million dollars a year for the citizens of South Dakota to use these databases. They're free to use. And as long as you are within the boundaries of the state of South Dakota, you can use them for free. So this is an alphabetical listing of databases. I'm not gonna cover all the databases today, but I wanted to share with you a couple of them that I think are absolutely excellent for all types of research. One of them is Gale Virtual Reference Library. Gale Virtual Reference Library is a collection of reference book materials, okay? And you can see right down here, over here on the left-hand side, all the topics that it covers. You can see it got, has 27 books, reference books about medicine. It has 27 about history. It has eight on nation and the world. There are some awesome resources in here. All reliable, all current, all accurate, all have relevance. So if I do a search on cancer in here, okay, I'm gonna retrieve 4,548 results, but all I'm retrieving are reference books articles that are clearly reliable. Okay, I don't have to carp any of these results. They are already carped for me. Okay, here's a whole information about a cancer. Let's just do a search like that on Google, just so you can see. Okay, if I do a search on cancer I, in Google, I get 883 million results. Okay, and I, these may be reliable, they may not be. I have to spend time doing the CARP on each one of them to determine whether they're reliable. When I go into Gale, I don't have to do that. I know they're reliable. I can go ahead and start doing my research, okay? Gale is wonderful. Like I said, you're searching only reference books when you search Gale. You're not going out and searching the web, you're just searching the reference books that are in this database. That's one of my favorite ones to use. I love that one a lot. One of the other ones that I love is Masterfile Premier. Masterfile Premier is a database that hosts magazine and newspaper articles. 
highly reliable. You have everything from People Magazine and Sports Illustrated to US News and World Report, Time Magazine, to um, the Journal of Abnormal Psychology. So there's a lot of wonderful resources in here and ones that you can get and know that they're reliable. So if I do a search on cancer in here, this time, instead of getting reference books, what I'm going to get, and I get 127,951, I'm gonna limit it to full text. And that reduces my results to 66,232, okay? I can see this one came from Business West Magazine, Georgia Trend, okay? This is not a particularly effective search. It would be better for me to narrow it, um, adding other keywords. So I could do cancer and depression. Okay. Let's see what comes up under that. I'm still limited to full text. Now I've narrowed it down to 483. So you really need to think about before you start using a database, what is your, your topic and what keywords can you use to get your results? And you can see here, this one is from Psychology Today, the new survivor here is, the article over here, the PDF full text. So if I had that Psychology Today magazine in front of me, this is what the actual magazine would look like, okay? And again, I don't have to wonder whether or not this is reliable. I know it is, it's already been carped, okay? Um, that is another one that I love, ProQuest. This is a database that also is magazine, newspapers, transcripts of, um, audio presentations, dissertations, theses. This is something you will use all throughout high school and college if you plan to attend a four year or two year college. This is something you'll use. Full text, if you put your uh, check mark there, you can do cancer excuse me, and depression. And you can see this database is trying to be helpful. It's trying to give me some other suggestions to help me in my search. I can use that to build my keyword list, okay? I have many, many results. This is a huge database. It has many, many different types of resources and a lot of high level academic resources, but great information. So ProQuest and Masterfile for magazine articles. I love WorldBook too. Let's take a quick look at that. WorldBook Advanced. World Book Advanced is a encyclopedia, online encyclopedia. You're probably familiar with World Book, which is that 26 volume set um, that sits on library shelves, one volume for each letter of the alphabet. This is the online version of it. Um, so it has great background information to build background information. So I can come in here and do a search on that. Now, this is not going to be as specific because it's just searching the world book. Um, I can't narrow it down necessarily any more than that, but look at all this information I have about cancer um, to start mine. The great thing about databases too is all their sources are cited. Their citations right there to copy and use in your presentation because we need to cite our sources. If I go out to Google and use one of these sources out here, it's not cited and I have to cite it. Okay. So Internet literacy does matter. It's important to know whether the information you're using is reliable. If it's not reliable, you need to not use it. And you have to start using this evaluation method or an evaluation method um, similar to this to become familiar with whether or not your resource is a good one, okay? Um, if you don't wanna spend the time doing that, then my suggestion to you is to come to the TF Riggs library page and use these databases. Come see me for more information about databases and how to use them and access them. For the purposes of this assignment, I want you to go back onto my Google Classroom page to the assignment. Now that you're done watching the video, we're gonna have you go into the classroom assignment page under classwork, evaluating news sources for credibility And now that you've watched the video, I want you to choose two of these articles, whichever two you want, and I want you to evaluate them using the CARP evaluation web seat. 
okay? You're gonna look through the article, read it, and then answer each one of these questions underneath currency, authority, accuracy, relevance, and purpose, okay? There is a page one for article one and a page two for article two, okay? So I want you to go ahead and do that for each article that you choose, whichever two articles you choose, evaluate them using the CART method to determine whether they're reliable to use for a research topic, okay? Have a great day. Thank you so much.